Good morning. In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Generations of American school children have heard that line as a way to recall Christopher Columbus's first voyage to the Western Hemisphere and what Europeans eventually called the New World. Since 1937, Columbus Day has been celebrated as a federal holiday, and this year the holiday lands on Monday the 14th. 527 years after his first voyage, we're still trying to figure out the meaning of Columbus. And as with many things from the past, agreement about Columbus and what he actually did is challenging. Was he that tall, daring Italian explorer who connected Europe to the continents we call North and South America, advancing the notion that the world was a sphere? Did he connect the two hemispheres, thereby allowing for an amazing exchange of products, cultures, and languages? Or was he the beginning of a period of horrible destruction for the indigenous people? Did Columbus and those like him usher in slavery and diseases that decimated entire tribes of native people? Did he uh, promote the false notion of European superiority over darker skinned people? You know, the answer, of course, is that there is truth in both versions of Columbus. You cannot reduce his story to one or the other. History doesn't work that way. In some areas of our nation, Columbus Day has now become Indigenous People's Day, a day of honor and remembrance for a part of the Columbus story that was too long ignored. Perhaps the use of both names makes sense. The lesson in all of this is that we need to know our history better. That includes the messy parts of the story that make us angry and uncomfortable. In facing the more complicated version of our past, it is possible to find the truth. And in finding the truth, we may learn and grow as a people, gaining deeper respect for the stories we've never learned. Thanks for your time today, and enjoy Friday. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, in liberty and justice for all. There are many homecoming traditions, the football game, the victory march, and of course, TPing. These traditions have become more and more destructive. Last year, the administration created a list for people who didn't want to participate though not many people know what it was. The no-hit list was a list of names from the community who don't want to be pranked. Pranking includes all forms of vandalism and trespassing. If the name is on the list, don't do anything to that person's house or property. If there is a report of violation, all homecoming activities will be canceled and charges may be filed against the violator. Even if there's only one report, all will still be canceled. The no hit list will be located in the comments. If you or your parents would like to be on this list, then call or email Mr. Chambers or the secretaries. Hello Tigers! Today is Friday, October 11th and it's an A day. Get ready for homecoming week. Everything kicks off on Sunday with entryway decorating from 4 until 5.30. There's a guys volleyball tournament at 5.30 in the field house. Girls flag football will begin 15 minutes following the conclusion of the boys volleyball game in the field house. This change was made due to the cold temperatures and rain slash snow expected this weekend. Wear your class colors to the games. Freshmen are yellow, sophomores are green, juniors are red, and seniors are blue. Staff, you will wear black. Plan ahead for Monday, it's beach day. And speaking of planning ahead, make sure to bundle up for tonight's game at Adam's Friendship. Temps will be a little higher than here at home, but at kickoff the thermometer will read about 40 degrees. It's blankets and hand warmers weather. Luckily, the soccer team is playing tonight at home and earlier. That game is at 4.30. The fall debut concert is Monday. The music department asks all students to come and support the 6th through 12th grade choirs at the fall debut concert this coming Monday, October 14th, starting at 7 p.m. in the Lunda Theater. That is only three days away. They hope to see you there. The Interact Club is sponsoring a fundraiser in two weeks. Give polio the finger this October 23rd by donating $1 to get your pinky fingers painted purple. Polio is a virus that most commonly affects children under the age of five. It attacks the nervous system, sometimes causing paralysis and even death. So come and help eradicate polio. We are almost there. We're wrapping up with a clip from a football hype video. See the full version on brfhspawprint.com. 
For GM97, I'm Genesis Cernick. And I'm Whitney Hunt. Have a warm weekend, Tigers. I want you to believe something to the core of your being. Humans lead with belief. Once you understand that the belief has to come first, then you'll know what it is that you have to work on because most people think they need to do something extraordinary in order to believe in themselves. But I'm telling you right now, if you don't believe in yourself first, you will never accomplish something great.